and a half points at the open. Let's uh, let's take a closer look though overseas and some of the investment opportunities that Nathan Bell from Peters McGregor is uh, is watching. Nathan, good to see you and thank you for joining us this morning. Now, um, just looking at US markets, I mean, still notching these record highs for the S&P and, and the Nasdaq. There's a lot wary, I guess, about the recent stock run. What are you making of these stocks climbing to these record heights? Do you see them as overvalued? Uh, look, I think if you look at the US market across the board, I think there's lots of overvaluation. If I take McDonald's, for example, revenue and earnings have barely moved since 2009, and yet the price-to-earnings ratio has doubled from 13 to 27. Uh, so this is a, a no-growth business and what I would characterise as the expensive defensive People see it as a very safe business, but the valuation now is so high that it offers absolutely no safety at all. So I think if you're going to make returns from here, uh, you probably need to dispel or dispense with the passive or index type strategies and start trying to pick individual stocks that actually offer a decent amount of safety and a decent return. And so uh, where, where are you finding opportunity and does it reside within the US market? So are you having to cast your net further, further abroad? Yeah, definitely further abroad. I'd say uh, the one opportunity that uh, we quite like in the US is the home building industry. Uh, really? uh, I don't normally like going anywhere near home builders because uh, <laughs> they tend to have a lot of debt and go broke in a recession. But in the US, it's actually cheaper to buy a home on average than rent one. It takes about 30% of income to rent uh, the average property in America and it costs about 25% of your income for a mortgage repayment. Uh, there's a company called NVR, which uh, we really like because it has next to no net debt. Uh, it's had earnings per share growth of 26% a year for 20 years. It was the only home builder that made a profit during the GFC, uh, and it's, re it's uh, retired 77% of its shares on issue over the past 20 years. Uh, so this is a, a company we, we really like. It's well managed, uh, and we don't think it's going to have any problems uh, going broke are or the, anything like that. Are the tailwinds still there? I know a lot of people were suggesting around 2011 was a good time to start getting in on some of that, you know, that home building segment in the US, that, you know, forecast for housing starts to triple to quadruple. I, I just wonder, is, have you still got that level of, of growth to come for at 2017? Uh, I, I don't think it's going to necessarily going to be there for 2017, but over the next 15 years, you've got the age group of like 36 to 44 year olds is going to be the largest the US population has ever seen. And that's going to take 15 years uh, to occur. But uh, as the millennials start coming through and having their own families um, and employment's very good, we think they're actually going to start to buy homes. And at the moment, the number of homes for sale in America as a percentage of the population is actually at the lowest it's been in at least 40 years. And with interest rates still so low, we think that's all goes very well for the industry over the next 15 years. Well, that's isn't it, because um, such a crucial part for those home builders would be the consumer and spending activity over there, unlike the situation here where, you know, we've got record debt, consumers not in such a great position. It's quite a different story in the US. It is. I think if you take the banks, for example, if you look at where Australia is, you're potentially worried about uh, a housing crisis at some point. America's already been through that, but that's also been reflected in the share prices. But if you look at Europe, uh, that's you know, at a much earlier stage of recovery. We've seen property prices uh, increase in a lot of the problematic parts like Portugal and Italy. But it's really only just getting started and you can still buy banks there for mm -hmm. around one times book value or less and offering 10% return on equities plus over the next few years. So uh, we're invested there and we think as far as the financials go, Europe is actually the best place to be looking at the moment. Can we ask about the um, technology stocks? So much focus on them. Obviously, NASDAQ, uh, all-time highs at the moment, led by the, the FANG stocks. You could probably throw in Microsoft there as well. Too much? Have they gone too hard? And if, if you like technology, but you sort of eyes water at the multiple some of these guys are trading at, are there other opportunities? Yeah, the place where we're finding the value is actually in the equivalent stocks in China. Uh, and we have as big as worries about anyone in China in terms of the amount of debt in the system. But in terms of these technology companies, we own uh, the Amazon of China, we own the Google of China, and we own another company called Tencent, uh, which some people mm. may know has the WeChat messenger service, which has 900 million Chinese people on it, uh, with half of those using it for two hours every day. Wow. It's just an absolutely incredible business. So even if we happen to have a recession, uh, the way I would think about these particular businesses would be exactly the same as Amazon and Google during the GFC, the tailwinds behind those businesses were so strong that it really just slowed them down temporarily uh, and then they continued to take off. And these are absolute national champions in China. They dominate their markets and 
a couple of businesses we own, Tencent and JD.com, are growing revenue at nearly 50% a year at the moment. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. Really interesting. All right, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again soon, Nathan. We do appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thanks, guys.